you want to adjust the mic part, do it beforehand, because I don't think we're going to be able to do that during. <laughs> well, you're live, so it's too late. <laughs> Welcome to Captain's Log. It's our first podcast. Hello. Real live. So we tried this initially. We didn't like the way it sounds. So we started over. Well, <laughs> that, that and the soundboard lost power. <laughs> so, you know, we're off to a good start over here. But hey, we're not flying. So, you know, loss of power, loss of comms. Not, not, a, not a huge situation today. So what's going on, man? Not a whole lot. Uh, I'm assuming everybody knows who you are. If they're following your blog. I need to work on that, dude. It's coming. It's, it's getting better, though. There's a lot of people coming along. I mean, I got two followers oh. <laughs> this week. <laughs> yeah, compared to last month, you know. But I can see people are finally starting to, you know, get an idea of what's going on. Because I've been doing a lot more um, advertising. But I'm been doing a lot more, I'll be doing a lot more uh, campaigning for advertising and, stuff and whatnot. So. Gotcha. Well, also. hopefully this will help. And then um, I just started working on the the magazine, the Captain's Log magazine. But um, I get all the contents or whatever, and then they put it together. And every uh, uh, two and a half months or so, or three months, they have a really nice magazine ready to go to publish. Gotcha. Really nice. Awesome. Yeah. Well, then for those who don't have a clue who I am, uh, my name is Mark. Um, uh, I'm not going to share my last name just now. <laughs> Maybe we'll find out down the road. Not, not, not important. Unless you publish it with my name, then there you go. Which, yeah, which I did. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. So, uh, Richard and I, we've been friends. She's f- since, uh, wow. Well, yeah, it's say been mid 2000, but that wouldn't make sense. It'd be like 2050. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, we, we, we'd say we started private pilot back together back 2000 in and i was like eight two, i got my private license and or certificate in nine 2015 no no i got my no, private I, done in 2009 so when the hell did i so you must have been the same i mean we finished private at the same time yeah 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 that's right um since yeah you know obviously you've moved on to the airlines um i haven't currently but uh still been involved in it in the GA aviation world uh, ever since. And what was the last time you flew? Uh, the last time, gosh, it's got to be like a month now. And I say all my other friends started getting sick that I usually fly with. So oh. I really haven't flown since. Like COVID sick? or just Yeah. Sick? Oh, really? Yeah. And then uh, I'm supposed to, I've been wanting to go up and get uh, current again in that Archer. Uh, but just haven't just haven't gotten around to doing it. So mm. yeah, it's it's been a while. But um, dude, I went up in the the Sirius with this girl uh, a couple of days ago. So I haven't flown a Sirius. It's, it's been what maybe a month and a half, <laughs> something like that. And I went up with her. I got in the cockpit, and I was like, Ew. "Where the hell is?" What am I doing? Yeah, <laughs> like, I honestly, know. that's that's what I'm afraid of. Even with just the archers, like, uh, it's been a while. Yeah, I forget how squirrely it gets or whatever. Even though that plane is way easier than a Cirrus. I mean, that thing yeah. Cirrus just wants to go up and go down and whatever. Yeah, but just the general stuff, you know. Like I went up, <clears throat> got the paperwork and everything, went out, did the walk around, and I sat sat down, and it's like, okay, I just felt uncomfortable. Like, what checklist do I even use? <laughs> You know where is this, whatnot, and then I like I just slowly, and I was trying to pretend like because I don't want no, the chick to know I said I I don't know what the hell I'm doing, <laughs> so I had to like figure out a way to do it where it's like it was weird because for a second there it was very very uncomfortable. No, I it's only been like a month and a half. I get it. It's not that you don't know what you're doing. It's I wouldn't say that. It's just that you're you you 
that's what that's what makes a good pilot a good pilot is knowing your own personal currency and when to feel that uncomfort level. Yeah. But as long as I've always found, because I get the same way too. I was telling my buddy Steve once, one of the first time, I mean, I have hundreds of hours literally in, in the Archer, in Warrior, same plane pretty much. <laughs> right? Like there's zero reason why I should ever get in that plane and be like, mm-hmm. but I, it had been a while since I'd flown and it was the first time that I'd flown this plane on, on by myself particularly. And um, I remember climbing out and my leg wouldn't stop shaking on the right <laughs> rudder. And I was like, I'm looking down. I'm like, the hell is going on? Like, <laughs> I'm like a damn student pilot over here. But it's just like, it was, it's been a little while. And while well, the winds were a little bit, um, a little squirrely that day too. That didn't help. But yeah. I know the feeling. But I've also known the feeling where it's like, mm, no, not today. Yeah. And it's like, as long as you know you can get to that point, then if you say we're going to push on and you trust yourself and you push on. I did uh, my multi-engine and instrument over at Deer Valley and uh, I paid a lot of paid a lot of money to sit on that taxi right in line. So at least as an instructor, you were getting paid. I was paying. <laughs> I remember going through IFR. Uh, we started, our class started doing IFR uh, cross countries and uh, <laughs> one of the guys in my class, he was leaving on a day it must have been like a day after the Super Bowl or something stupid and the airways were just crazy busy. <laughs> he said uh he sat uh just off waiting for his clearance. I think he's for forty five minutes. Just for his clearance. What? Uh I have like, for clearance? Yeah. Either that or to or to take off. And I was like, dude, I would have just turned around. I'd been like, We're we're done. A Scott deals like that. Which is really really pisses me off, I find. Like you sit on the ramp there for, not your ramp, but when you you taxi out to the end of like runway two one or whatever, and uh, I'm not gonna say, but my instructor that that when I got my, you know my uh, checkout for the Cirrus, he's like, well don't park in on in front of the thing because you don't want those jets to be blocking those jets when you're trying to take off for IFR. Yeah. So go around there and park. Uh, you know, hell, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm done with that. Well, no. Over it. I'm I'm sitting in the middle of the the, the taxi thing. I'm ready to go. I want my clearance. Clear to take off. Yeah. I'm not waiting for these jets to pass me. Dude, I did a set there. I think it was me when I took Jade and um, a flight down to Tucson or whatever. We sat in the freaking thing for half an hour waiting for them. We were ready to go, and jets were coming in, not even on the taxiway. or were coming on the taxiway and taking off after one after the other, and we're sitting there. Dude, I was pissed. So from now on, I'm going to block that taxiway. What I'm the heck? I'm going to block the, the, you know. It takes me two seconds to do a run-up. I'm ready to go. Well, I've never just sat in the corner and then called for my clearance, like, ready for departure. I've always, once I'm done with the run-up, I'm, I'm always, I've always been, like, right on the line. I don't want anybody getting in front of me. Well, I'm going to start doing that now. Screw that. Yeah. Especially in a series, you're just going to get up and out anyways. If you want yeah. me out of the way, call an early right turn or something, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Or put me on a left downwind, and if the jet needs to go right, whatever. Yeah. But yeah, nah, screw those guys. Sorry, guys. Actually, you know what? Don't screw those guys. You know, <coughs> I take that back. <laughs> uh, CMI. Yeah, man, drink, drink all up. What is that? Let me see. I'll take a look at it. Just gonna <laughs> spill it. Pour. God damn. Bullet ninety five, yeah, right? I'm Frontier a, whiskey. I am. A, I'm a pilot, so I am an alcoholic. <laughs> Frontier whiskey. That's right. Yeah, I won't say what it is until they start sponsoring us. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a rye. Beep beep it's, beep whiskey. It's very delicious. Better on ice, but uh, I, I can do it neat. Mm, smells good. Let me see. I'll take. I'll take. A, let's see what it tastes like. Ooh. I'm sorry. You just gotta take little sips, especially when it's you don't have the a uh, little bit of water or anything. Not that I put splash. Not that I put. Well, I'll put a splash of water in scotch hmm. because it uh brings out the flavors and the all the sassy oh. goodness. Ooh wee! That's not bad actually. Yeah, the first one you Ooh. feel the burn. Yeah. 
that that stops after a few sips, and then you can start to taste it. Mm. It's better with a cube in it, though. It's not bad, actually. Wow. Yeah, I can definitely. I can see people getting into. I can definitely get into that. Yeah, it takes a while. Like, yeah, I started with scotch, which was a little bit sweeter. Um, like, so if I can get you into good scotch, then we can transition you over to rye. And then I think I can switch you over to bourbon. Although I'm still getting used to, I'm still getting myself acclimated with bourbon. Yeah. Um, it's it's different. You smoke cigars? Uh, it's been a while, but yeah, yeah I'll pretty much smoke anything, but, <laughs> but drugs. <laughs> dude, dude, I've seen guys because when it I mean crack on some weekends, but I mean, come on, we got to <laughs> kick back sometimes. Dude, I've seen guys, you know, we do these long flights, man. I don't know how these guys do it. But I've seen guys, as soon as they got off a plane, they're like, where the hell, where the hell is that fucking designated smoking area? I need to be there right well, now. Well, that was like me when I went to Germany, but uh, I, I took my vape on the plane, so there's oh, that. yeah. Luckily, it didn't, like, it was, it was a cheaper one, so it didn't, like, put out that, no one could see it. Can't you get a non-scented vape? You couldn't smell it unless you blew it right into somebody's face. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, I still wouldn't have wanted to get caught with it. Yeah. But uh, it wasn't it wasn't bothering anybody because no one knew, no one could see it, no one could smell it. So I was like, "What the hell's the harm?" Yeah, actually, I got, actually had somebody arrested bef- arrested on my flight yeah, for smoking on my story. on my plane, and I was very proud of it too. Because when when somebody smokes, when you're a captain and somebody does things they're not supposed to on your plane, that's paperwork. Yeah. <laughs> You know, nothing worse than paperwork. You're, I'm an airline pilot. We don't do paper. <laughs> so this guy, uh, <laughs> so we were, I forget where we were. Well, we're parked somewhere. And we're waiting for a gate, which happens a lot. All right. Um, and I get a call from the flight attendant saying, hey, uh, um, I think somebody just smoked in the, the bathroom. No, no. I think, oh, yeah. He, he, there's a guy who wanted to get off the plane or something like that. Because he wants to go, he wants to know when we're going to get to the gate. Because for some reason, I was like, well, whenever we get to the gate, I have no control over it. <laughs> so um, I get another ding. Oh, yeah. The same guy got up, went to the bathroom, and I think he just um, smoked in the, in the bathroom. I was like, really? Can so, you tell? So that's like two dings because you can't, you're not supposed to get out of your seat and go to the bathroom if you're sitting on the tarmac, right? Uh, well, it depends on where you are. So if you, if I allow them, they can. Oh, all right. It's just that if, if, before I move, usually what you do, you tell them, hey, it's going to be a while. So they can go to the bathroom if they need to. You can go give yeah. them some water. Interesting. Um, I didn't. It's good to know. They don't tell you that. <laughs> it depends on where you are. But if, if before we go, um, before we can move, usually you tell the flight attendant, before we can move, let me know everybody's seated and secure so we can start moving again. So um, it just depends on where you are. If you're on like a hot taxiway where you could be moving any second, you don't you don't do it. Yeah, so I, I I think I told them I told her that yeah I'm probably gonna get it's a federal law I think I'm probably gonna call the the police that came out. I, I, I forgot something happened I don't know what it is but I'm gonna call someone to come get him because he smoked in the damn cockpit and I got a paperwork and I'm pissed or whatever and then he pissed on a freaking seat like he sat there and what? pissed on a seat Not yeah that you didn't tell me yeah did I tell you that no that I dude didn't oh know. I was so pissed man so does that that seat was pissed too but I was pissed even more wow. Yeah, he sat there and pissed on himself. On a, uh, I guess he was trying to say he's sick or whatever. So, um, uh, we finally got pulled up to the gate or whatever. And I was like, "How am I gonna do this?" You know, because if he, if everybody gets up and gets off the plane, he could just sneak off, or whatever. So I was like, I called him up and said, "Hey, this is what we're gonna do. We're just gonna have, we're gonna tell the people to sit down, keep the seatbelt sign on when we park, and then we're gonna have the, the security people come on and take him off." And that's what they did. They came and pulled him off, and then everybody got up, whatever. But yeah, wow, it's annoying because if if you and the most most airplane see, uh, toilets don't have like a, a fire alarm system. I don't think so. I'm not sure the one seven five did, but he has a he has an extinguisher in like in the in the trash can that's based on heat. If it gets up to like seven degrees Celsius, it the tube uh, there's a little tube on the little thing that covers it up and melts. And it extinguishes the the fire. Oh. It only goes inside. And the trash. Can. The trash can, yeah, though. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. But there's no way of knowing if there's fire in there. 
in the bathroom unless you see smoke. Versus everywhere else, there's an alarm that goes off. Wow. Yeah. Uh, wow. So the smoke alarm won't go off if you smoke a cigarette and then live. Uh, they're always the flight go. attendants. Oh, so let me rephrase that. The cockpit won't know. The flight attendants will know. Gotcha. So there's because there's a fire um um uh, fire uh, signals for you know like the engine, um you know the 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 baggage compartment and stuff like that. Um, but in the cockpit, you won't know if there's a fire going on in the in the bathroom. But the flight attendants will know right away. Yeah. So. It's this alarm that goes off that they get. <clears throat> Don't fucking do it, man. <laughs> Don't yell at me. I'm not gonna die. I did. I, I brought a little faith on that. <laughs> Don't do it, man. You go. To, you go to jail. Some countries, I think you go to freaking what? Maybe you can go to prison. It's a federal law. Well, vapes aren't a federal law yet. That's a airline law. Um, airlines. Uh. Oh, is it? Is it just the airline that? Uh, that? I'm totally guessing. Oh. But as far as I know. No, dude, I can do this, dude. A little yeah, bit of ice, good, I can right? see it. Huh? Yeah, it's tasty. Yeah, it is. If you need to, you get a little club soda, too. That's fine. Oh, yeah? Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, no, my goal is before I hit the airlines, um, even the regionals, uh, if I end up the regionals or corporate, is to, uh, to be a non smoker. I don't want to deal with that crap. But it's funny because yeah. typically on a plane, as soon as I cross through security, it's like my brain shuts it off. It just it knows I can't smoke anymore. Oh, really? Yeah, and I don't even think about it. it it's crazy. But I'm the same way. As soon as I'm back through the other side, oh, no. get me to the smoker spot. It's oh, like really? my head clicks back on in my brain. And it's like, go. Get out there, mother. <laughs> so, but yeah, I'm, luckily for me. Um, but I remember back when I was a teenager before, before 9-11, uh, I used to smoke in airport bathrooms. I didn't care. I was like 17, 18. What? You really? 16, yeah. I didn't care. I smoked in Chicago O'Hare. I smoked in Phoenix. I smoked in San Diego, Oakland. <laughs> yeah. You were 16, you said? Yeah, I've been smoking since I was a kid. Oh, wow. man. Yeah, sadly. Um, not proud That's of probably that. That's probably why you're so thin. Maybe, maybe I should start. <laughs> Lose yeah. some weight. Well, and, you know, uh, <laughs> I'm anorexic as well. You know, I'm going to purge all this up later. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, no. Uh, you know there. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't do it now. I mean, now you'd, now, now you'd be now, tasered, zip tied, and banned oh, from flying for life, and then you'd be banned. Yeah, all my be. certs would be re- revoked. And yeah. I'd be, oh yeah, you'd be, be yeah. rushed out into the cornfield. Yeah, I think you probably. I don't know if you lose your license or whatnot. No. Probably not. Yeah, because that has nothing to do with FAA. Well, it does actually. But well, um, not in the airport. Yeah, not in the airport. No. No, I've never smoked on a plane. Oh, okay. No, oh, in the airport. No, airport, not airport. Oh, okay, gotcha. Uh, no, I've never oh my god, done. damn, dude! Should I be saying this on the podcast? No, <laughs> I've been looking for your ass. I just haven't no, found you yet. No, no. Okay, got you. Yeah. You know, they're like all the planes. They're they still have all the, um, the freaking uh the smoke uh, shit. What does it shit call? Ashtrays. The ashtrays. Yeah, it's but like, they're all sealed off. No, they they're required by law to be operational. All the ones now I've ever seen were like they were there, but they you couldn't open it. You can open it. It's just that nobody's opened it. It has to be there. It's actually an MELable item. Really? Yeah. You know why? You know why it has to be there? Oh, well, I'd imagine so. If someone lights up, they have a place to put a cigarette. That's out. it. <laughs> I mean, if someone lights up for some reason, they can put it out. <laughs> there, there's a video of a guy uh, that's on. It's floating around YouTube. He's on a Southwest flight, clearly drunk. He's kind of half asleep and he's bobbing and weaving, and he just like instinctively reaches into his pocket, and pulls out a cigarette, and just boom, lights it up, <laughs> and you can see all the passengers around him looking. I'm like, what the, f- what the fuck is going on? <laughs> but he's just got his eyes closed. He's just like, and he might as well have been on his porch at home, you know. <laughs> so the, they call the flight attendant. You see the guy hitting the button, and the, and the flight attendant comes up, taps him on the shoulder, and he opens his eyes and he realizes where he's at, and he's looking at what's in his hand, and he freaks out. He's like. You could see it, and like you almost feel bad for him for a second, because you're like he was total just autopilot, no pun intended. And he looks and he's like, "Oh, I fucked up. I fucked up." 
and you kind of feel bad because you're like, oh, he wouldn't have done that if. Yeah. But then again, you shouldn't. If you're, I'm assuming he was drunk. If you're gonna get drunk, then that's on you. But well, I think if he goes, oh, I'm so sorry. I, I, I think I'm kind of hoping he didn't. Yeah. At least, I, hopefully, they probably called him, maybe slap him around a little bit, but maybe not arrest federal yeah. law. No, I think if he goes, man, well, the people that goes, man, I'm, I'm so sorry. I don't know. I, I don't know what the hell I was thinking. I really made a mistake. They usually, I think, at times they get off. They're fine. No. As the ones that are like, oh, I didn't smoke, even though they fucking <laughs> yeah, that's a little, bit. and then they go back and pee in their seat. Yeah, yeah, you know, okay, that's a different story. Yeah, the ones that are like when they go, which has happened a few times to me when they they go ask, sir, did you smoke in the bathroom? No, even though he freaking you can see the the smoke coming off out of his freaking. It's like me in high school. <laughs> what are you talking about? It's like you're the only one in the bathroom. Yeah. I'd be like, wasn't me, yeah, dude. You didn't see me. Yep, and unfortunately, you can't. If he goes, no, I didn't smoke, I, I realize, I'm not sure if, what the law is, but you can't go, yes, you did smoke. You can't, you know, there's no way for you to, unless, unless you can prove right, it. Right, that's you know? the cop's job. Yeah. Um, even if you call the cops, and, you know, we, uh, it's happened a few times where, in the 145, we go, did you smoke in the, in the bathroom, sir? And he, nope. And all you can do is, just like, okay, I mean, somebody did, but uh, we know it's you, but we really can't prove that it's you. Right. But... You're an asshole. Well, you're the only one to get out of your seat. Yeah. But all right. Yeah. Yeah. I. Uh, you can you can clearly see it on the dude's face when he opens his eyes when the flight attendant hits him on the shoulder, <laughs> and he just kind of looks and he's like, you you can just you can almost feel it. He's just like, oh, fuck. That's funny. But uh, yeah, it's pretty. the The funniest part is just watching the people like in the row next door. They're like freaking out. It's like, dude, okay, this is bad, but it's not like the plane's gonna catch on fire. Relax. It's funny. It's I think yeah, they all think like, there's oxygen in this plane. We're gonna explode. Well, shit. They used to smoke. I mean, they used to smoke like hell back in the. I know. I missed my calling. Back in the what was it? The eighties? Was it? I probably? think up until probably like the early. Well, at least early the air. 80s? No, well, probably not on air airliners, <laughs> but in the airport, you could. I remember be traveling in the nineties. Yeah. And seeing people smoke. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, shit, man, I can't imagine that. Ashtrays everywhere. <laughs> Entire friggin' a cabin is friggin' engulfed. That, yeah, I mean, even as a smoker, I'd look at that and was like, oh, that must have been miserable. Well, they were having issues with the, like, the alpha valves and whatnot getting all sticky all the time. So they wouldn't, <clears throat> so they would, have pr- they would have pressurization issues all the time. Because the nicotine, right, will... It goes to the off pole valve as the pressure changes, and it'll stick. So as uh, you're descending or climbing or whatever, it wouldn't change. Oh, so shit. So it'll wow. screw up the pressurization system all the time, apparently. Well, it makes sense if all the air is going out of it, so you're going to yeah. get all that. Yeah. Huh. That's, yeah. A, that's an interesting little tidbit, folks. There you go. That's why you're listening to this. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and then for those of you uh, student pilots... Uh, Probably working on commercial. I'd imagine that that's a possible question. Actually, that you might have to answer is where that what? How does the pressure change in an airliner uh-huh. or in an airplane? Mm. So uh, I I didn't get asked it personally in my commercial ride, but uh, I know I was told to study it. You'll well, definitely get asked in your check ride for your airline. Well, I'd hope type. so. I'd hope so. <laughs> so well far, I haven't flown a pressurized Seminole Archer Cessna yet. Yeah. But, uh, oh yeah, but yeah, yeah, I was told to know that. Like, how does it work, and where is that typically located? Yeah, yeah, man. It's kind of like uh, the new thing now. Apparently, the FAA was trying to. Uh, was it FAA? They were trying to make it where you can actually talk on the phone in flight or whatever. Like it's it's legal. The the it's legal to actually talk. While the airplane is taxiing and taking off, getting your cell phone. I don't know. I will say this. People have been asking me all the time. Is it a big deal to, you know, be on the phone while you're... While you're uh... Yeah, I heard that's always the first question. Yeah. Look, I don't know. This this is what I know, I'll say. Okay, I'm not an engineer, but I do know this. On the 145, specifically. Not the 175, but the 145. When I say 145, I'm talking about it's a, uh, uh, a 50-seater... Uh, regional jet, a small jet, <laughs> just for you people who don't know. Um, you people. Yeah, you people. <laughs> non 
Gab geeks. <laughs> um, but I flew. It's an airliner. Um, it's a small little mini jet. It carries 50 people. But I know for that aircraft, you can tell when somebody's on your phone. You're the really yeah in the cockpit. You're the you know that you put your phone up to your radio. Yeah, you know uh, you no, get that. But I can imagine what you're talking about. You get a but yeah. Well, when you put your phone up to a probably not these phones, but there's a time when you put your phone up to the radio and you hear a oh, like a, a buzz sound. Yeah, you hear that in the cockpit. Yeah, I know not even in like GA though they tell you if you're on an IFR flight that you need to kind of turn off all unnecessary equipment because. Well, it's radio. Well, anything that can, yeah, anything that could possibly interfere with the instruments. Mm-hmm. But I've also always heard the theory that you can't use it in flight because they always want your attention, which is kind of out the window now because everybody's got their own DVD players and iPads, i iPods. Yeah, not DVD And players. I don't know I don't if I buy that, but that was always that was always one of the theories. It was like, well, it is if you if you're forced to only watch the onboard entertainment, then that way they. N- can cut you off because obviously when you make an announcement as the pilot or the flight attendant makes an announcement, it stops the entertainment mm-hmm. and you have to listen. Yeah. You know, and that includes safety brief. Mm-hmm. So I, no, man. and I always kind of bought that theory. I'm like, well, that kind of makes sense. And then once you're up 30,000 feet, your phone don't work anyways. Trust yeah. me. I've tried because I've tried to use my data <laughs> on an airline. I'm gonna be honest. I, I don't work for nobody. Why would you at thirty thousand feet? How it, you, it don't work. <laughs> it doesn't your, work. Your t- those phone <laughs> towers aren't gonna go. Fuck it. Yeah. You know, what so were you trying to accomplish there? That's funny. I was trying to get my dad at work, so I could, oh, I could gotcha. hook my laptop up. More, I was curious more than I was trying to. I I really don't. I <laughs> I download everything I want to fucking consume. What in the hell? Life. Yeah. But I mean, anybody in their right mind, and obviously it should occur to me. But yeah, your your phone don't work. Yeah, um, but I don't, know, I don't but, know about but that. But like that said, it, it, on the ground, you know, people would be on their phones through that whole safety brief, which is mandated by the FAA. So that's a good way. I, I would say it's at least supporting, right? Like that's one more reason for people not to be on their phones. No, well, no, I don't. I don't know about that. I've never seen a. I don't know about that. I've never seen a flight attendant enforce. Um somebody to watch the safety video well no they don't but i'm sure i mean that's the is that a law that's that says uh that you have to because uh, i'm just curious i don't know, I don't know well, the it's, it's the law that has to be provided it's not the law that everybody you have to, you have to, to watch it. attention yeah yeah nobody pays attention <laughs> no yeah well especially now because i mean it loosened the rule to where like oh you can have it in airplane mode and now everybody's still listening to music and all that crap yeah you and just, everybody has nowadays everybody i mean i can't even tell um it's, well it, well, actually, well, going back to what you said, you know, I'm going to kind of rebunk. Is that a word? Debunk? Debunk. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to rebunk. Well, if you're going to prove me wrong, then it's debunk. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to debunk kind of what you said. Well, then fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Podcast is over. The Yeah. Like you download, nowadays you download the American Airlines app, the Southwest app, you know, you yeah. go online, huh? Yeah, and all those bro- broke ass A three nineteens, three twenties. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's all you get. You don't bring an iPad or something. You're screwed. You're screwed, right? Exactly. So, but again, they don't allow it until you're at least ten thousand feet. So I can get, I can see that. You can't watch that stuff until you're ten thousand feet taken off. But descending, they don't care. So I don't know, dude. It doesn't seem like they really give a shit. <laughs> well, the one thing we have to remember, and it's uh, true, is it's uh, it's the government, it's the FAA. So who knows? Yeah. Yeah, but I've never seen a cell phone take down an airliner yet. Yeah, um, but um, so uh, yeah, I was on a <laughs> this flight going to Dallas, and uh, speaking of somebody being on their phone, this individual, <laughs> this dude, was on his phone. We're taxiing out, and we're locked up and everything. Push back, taxiing out. This dude's on his phone, having business is going on. Yeah, 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 you know, you know, I'm working on this, you know. Hopefully Johnny checks his email, blah, blah, blah. So the flight thing comes in and it's loud too. It's not like he's like being freaking in spin- what's the word? You know Inconspicuous. Inconspicuous, right, you know. He's not even pretending to freaking care, this this guy. So uh he um the flight thing comes up and is like, Sir, you need to turn your phone off. And he's still talking. So you know, get the get the fuck away from me. Yeah. Like he literally yeah, said that. So she Sure enough, she oh okay, 
<laughs> she, she walks off, and I was like, I don't, I don't know where the hell is this going. <laughs> she walks off. We're taxiing, dude. Right to the cockpit. You know, anyway, all of a sudden, the plane stops. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> dude, all of a sudden, the plane stops, and then the, the, the captain comes out. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. Uh, her policy, uh, you know, uh, states that uh, prior to taxiing and takeoff, everybody needs to have their airplane, either their phone in the airplane mode. But because uh, gentlemen in, let's see here, seat uh, 16B, that is that is, that is seat 16B, <laughs> we're going to park right here, and we're not going to go anywhere. We're going to stop until he gets off his phone and puts it in the airplane mode. That's, that's in 16B. <laughs> Public shaming. I fully support dude, it. We need more of it. Dude, and then there's a, guy, there's a guy behind him. I'm sitting here, dude, I'm watching this going down. It got bad. It's crazy how people can get nasty, dude. It gets bad real quick. There's a guy behind him. Hey, dude, get the fuck off your phone. <laughs> get the fuck off your phone. <laughs> um, But it's pretty, it was well, well thought. I thought it was pretty good. But it, apparently there were, it was actually <clears throat> a bid for it to, for you to be able to have an actual service airborne that the airline would provide for you. And it got... Um, pushed aside or whatever. Internet. Well, you 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 able to use your phone. You get internet now, but your actual oh, phone service. They wanted to sell you. Yeah. Ah, those fucking bastards. Yeah. I uh, speaking of which, just another quick story. When I was younger, I mean, going back to when I was a kid flying on United, we we dressed. Mm-hmm. We dressed up. Whether we were sitting coach, we had to in first class. But if we were if we were flying coach, we had that we dressed up. Um, and well, that's I, just what you did. Like you present yourself nicely. Yeah, I remember that. I remember when you you know that's the way it should be. I remember I shit, but back then people dressed up to answer the phone too. So, <laughs> shit, put her head on. <laughs> if I'm going to Hawaii though, I'm not. I mean, I, I'm not dressing in. Even if I'm even if I'm in first you'll, class. Yes, but you'll you'll dress comfortable, but. Yeah. Respect, for Hawaii. Respectful though, right? I mean, you're not going to be shorts, looking like trash. Shorts, flip flop, Hawaiian shirts, probably. If I'm if I'm on, if I'm on the plane to Hawaii, that's what I'm wearing. Okay, fair enough. I, I yeah. can get that. Yeah, I can. Yeah, but I get what you're saying. I do understand what you're saying. You know, but uh, uh, maybe I'm just a little bit old school. Yeah, I mean, people are nowadays. Yeah, it is. I mean, some people, uh, especially knowing they're gonna be in business class or whatever, they know they're gonna be sleeping in a very comfortable bed, so they dress to go to bed. <laughs> you know, well, that's the thing too. <laughs> like, but my shoes were on until I was like, "Oh, hey, it's the queue. Everybody's turning down their things, right?" Yeah. Because uh, I mean, there was daytime the whole flight, but you yeah. shut all those shades yeah, down, yep. and it's next dark. thing you know, it's nighttime. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I guess it's time to go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> and I had drinking enough and eating enough. I'll tell you. Anybody who's never flown a business first class uh, to Europe, if you're going to Europe more than once in your life, I highly suggest at least experiencing it once. Now, I know yeah. I'll do it again at some point, hopefully when I'm a pilot, because speaking of how our legacies are kind of going down the hole, <laughs> I know my ultimate airline goal is to, to be working for a different kind of company where there's better international Perks. flying, where... Yeah, a little more uh, class, yeah. but um, it's an experience. It's a good one. Highly recommended. And real quick before uh, we move on, which we got to be wrapping up here soon. Yeah. Um, just reading here, breaking news today. Wow. Uh, Boeing has announced that Atlas Air has officially purchased the last four 747s to be built. Oh wow! So Atlas Cargo is going to buy the last. Freshly built 747s. The 74-800? It does not specify on what I'm oh. looking at, but uh, yeah, man. So if you want to fly the queen of the skies, you got to go cargo. Because I think the only one left is the Tunza. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And they have a bunch, man. It won't be long until they kill theirs, I'm sure. Because yeah. BA just killed theirs. Atlantic killed theirs. Or Virgin, rather. Uh, so... Yeah, I think I think Virgin or uh, sorry, Lutanza is the last until you go to cargo. But I mean, those brand new seven fours. I mean, they're going to be in the year in the air for years. So yeah, and uh, you know, I wouldn't mind. That's my dream. 
The seven four is an old ass. Like the, the 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 newer models are an, a bunch of old ass planes, steam gauges and shit. I'd imagine this one's probably a lot like the seven sixties you fly. It's probably got to be a lot of the same updated technology, but mm, not. Well, if it's really. the, the eight hundred series, it's it should be all glass and modern. <coughs> I know they designed they designed the new 800 C, uh, series back when I was in UND yeah, okay. flight training, and those should be <coughs> a very sophisticated type of uh, seven fours. Gotcha, which it kind of makes sense. It's more cargo. I mean that that puppy holds a lot a lot of room, as we talked about earlier. Yeah, because it's funny you can take all that cargo and still have a cabin space for crew and was, passengers in the top front. Ever heard of the Antonov? Oh, yeah, the Russian huge mother effer. Huge yeah, ass. it's been at Gateway a bunch of times. Have you seen it? Yeah, I've seen it a few times around the world. I've seen seen pictures. I have never been out to Gateway and to actually see it. I've seen it, I've seen it in Shannon, parked. I mean, it, uh, they have several. I've seen it all over the world, just parked, you know, <laughs> sitting there. Dude, it's huge, man. You know, they're, uh, they do very, very heavy um, cargo lifting. Yeah. Yeah. It takes freaking four dudes to take off. <laughs> you know, you know, you have two guys. I mean, how many engines does they have? Like eight, shit like that. Four. Gosh, is it four engines? No, I think it's more than. It's at least six or eight. Yeah, some shit like that. So you got two guys pushing the throttles up, or some shit like that. Uh, two guys on the yoke when it's time to rotate. <laughs> That's how they fly that shit. That's freaking crazy. That's six. Six engines. Yeah. Yeah. Through there. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like I was. I was watching old videos on the Concorde too, and the flight engineer would would come up and push the throttles up for takeoff, mm -hmm. which was kind of weird. It's interesting. Yeah, what's the you should you should watch a YouTube video on on some. On, there's one out there that that shows a flight on the Concorde. It's like British Air to from London, to like JFK or something. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting. Well, all that stuff is, and that's another thing you're gonna learn. A lot of that stuff is union, union, um, uh, promoted, I should say. Because there's a time when uh, they were trying to prove that the flight engineer was not needed in the cockpit, right? And they were trying to prove that the flight engineer was needed. So, <laughs> so the union I wish goes. They would have. There would have <laughs> been a lot more jobs right now. <laughs> the union says, "Hey." I'm not sure if it's true or not. I'm just making this up, by the way. It's my opinion. It says, hey, man, job security. We're going to go push that throttle up real quick. <laughs> yeah. It wouldn't surprise me if the union I'm guaranteed. did. I mean, that's what unions do. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that we uh, are doing right now that have been fixed because it was just. And if <laughs> if the pilot industry had anything to do with all the fucking paper charts and all that, the union would have fought. We would never have iPads. Yeah. That's You'd true. all be carrying around those fifty-pound freaking roll cases all over the place <laughs> every day. Um, but uh, the seven six was designed for um, a uh, a flight engineer. He has, oh, a, yeah. he, has, he has a big thing in the. Well, it was made in what the sixties, eighties. Uh, oh, really? It was yeah. designed. Yeah, it was. Well, it was. It was probably designed in the seventies, in late seventies, but I think it, the first was like eighty-one or something like that. It was the first, really the first automated, uh, kind of well-automated airplane uh, that really was designed. You know, not all steam gauge, whatever, you know. Gotcha. Yeah, 80 or something, 81, whatever. But I think next time, you think we kind of know next time, we'll have topics. I think that's what we need to do, pick topics um, and ask questions about the topics and whatnot and kind of um, bullshit around the topic. Just go around circle with it, you know. Yeah, it's like maybe three general topics or whatever, and uh, even even things that we don't know, you know, want to want want answers for. But we'll have guesses and stuff like that as well, that we can ask some questions and maybe even more better, especially when shit that we don't know about, you know. And then we have topics on, you know, maybe flight training and DPE and what not to do in a check ride. You know, we'll, we'll get we'll get in a routine, you know. Definitely, uh, Richard seems to have a little more uh, broader view, which is great like that's what we need yeah mine is great and i i, I kind of keep also like focus because we're in different spots as well you know the other airline pilot i still float in the ga realm and um i know where you guys are at that are trying to claw your way into the industry or just starting so 
um, I'll speak on the people, kind of people that I want to talk to and have in here, and we will. And he, like as he just said, so uh, yeah, we're here in Phoenix. So oh yeah, yeah, we'll have right. some local, um, high CFI time, old school guys out here to talk about the airspace, this and that, and the other. Probably not too much because we want to kind of cater to all, but you know, I'll touch on a little bit that will also be relevant to people in other states. Uh, DPEs, you know, questions, answers, and of course that can be a broad spectrum as well because as we all know, the examiners can freaking ask you anything you want, but hey, at least we get a little bit of insight. Yeah. Uh, and then we're going to try to, I'd love to try to get some of the other high uh, aviation um, influences in here. A lot of people you see on, on Facebook and all of the groups that are out there, whether they're state, regional, country, YouTube, uh, pilots out there that are um, popular, that are making videos, whether they're flying small planes, uh, kind of going after their own thing, up to uh, corporate pilots. Um, we'll get them on the show. And we'll talk to them. So I think that'll be very interesting for all. Yeah. And uh, stay tuned for that. Because if there's one thing I don't doubt, it's it's Richard's ability to get a hold of people and and get them to talk to us. So, Richard, yes. What's uh, what kind of aileron does an Archer have? Uh, differential aileron. Is that what it is? <laughs> it is. It is. Yes, and do you know? Do you remember why it has a differential <laughs> AR on? Hell no, dude. <laughs> I don't think with it. It's to counteract adverse yaw. Oh, and yeah. If you don't know that, ladies and gentlemen, do not get ready to take a check ride from private on if you don't know what a differential aileron is and why <laughs> it is there. All right. Um, but uh, real quick, talk about some of the guests that you foresee coming up. Who you'd like to talk to? And oh, and I'll have. Uh, I'll be as diverse as we can, uh, FAA, hopefully. Um, I have airline pilots from all over the world, from all over different airlines. Uh, maybe recruiter, airline recruiters, airline hiring. Uh, I say airline, yeah, but that's what it is, you know. Um, people on the, the, the hiring board and stuff like that. Um, um, ATC, air traffic controllers. Uh, you know, much, much more. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah. But also, uh, you know, once I publish all these, uh, um, these episodes, you know, you guys can post questions or information you want to learn about. Also, what show? What do you want to see? Who do you want to see on the show? We'll try and accommodate, I guess. You know, but yeah, your thoughts, questions, Q and A's, well, Q's. We'll do the A's. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, we'll and go if, from there. And if we can't do the A's, we'll find out somebody who can. Because we're not going to be able to answer everything. But um, So think of it that way. You're not asking us. You're asking us to find out. Yeah. Mark is we'll an A. We'll He's a big fat A. <laughs> well, um, you know, speechless. Yeah, <laughs>